Teamwork. You've no doubt heard this word used in many contexts. As a child, you might have used it to describe what should take place in sports clubs or other combined efforts. What does teamwork mean to you? Do you feel that you are on a team? How's that going for you? Are you enjoying the team you're on? Maybe you've just started a new job or possibly your workplace is ramping up to improve how everyone works together. Teamwork is defined by more than one person working together toward a shared goal. In its basic form, teamwork doesn't actually require fun, happiness, mutual respect, or any of the positives that form what we think of as an ideal team. This training is built on the assumption that you care about building a culture of positive teamwork where those aspects of being on a team are valued. We will discuss the characteristics of effective teams, the benefits of building a culture of working together, and the challenges faced by workplace teams. You will also learn some key strategies for nurturing teamwork, including what teamwork looks like in a digital world. Are you ready to do your part to build a positive work environment as part of a team? Take notes as you go through this training. Keep track of any ideas you come up with and then share them with your coworkers afterward or take this training together and discuss as you go. Have you ever been part of a team that just didn't mesh? Negative mindsets, poor habits, or simply poor planning when assembling working groups can all contribute to this effect. And the result is an ineffective team, often accompanied by high employee turnover and overall negative environments. An effective team is purposefully assembled based on the strengths of each individual employee. Weaknesses, better looked at as areas where growth is needed, should also be taken into consideration as you look to develop yourself and your employees. Once assembled, lay out clear expectations on how communication will take place. This includes encouraging active listening, developing safe spaces where otherwise marginalized ideas can be considered, deciding how tasks will be delegated, making sure that regular check-ins in all directions are the norm. And building a culture of honesty, transparency, and decision-making and mutual respect. Employee safety should always be a consideration as you work to improve a product, a process, or complete a project. Effective teams acknowledge their interdependence on one another, not just for task completion, but also to keep each other safe. This does include looking out for each other's physical safety, but consider also the role we all play in keeping our fellow workers safe from harassment, bullying, and other dangers that often show up in negative workplace cultures. One often overlooked characteristic of effective teams is that they tend to find ways to infuse positivity and a sense of fun and play into their everyday activities. Once you get to the point where everyone can consistently enjoy showing up for work and the job is getting done satisfactorily, you will have mastered effective team building. We've learned so far how effective team cultures are characterized by excellent communication, interdependence, supporting a safe work environment, professional growth mindsets, and a slew of positive workplace characteristics. Positive team cultures are also places where mentoring happens both purposefully and naturally. Workplaces that emphasize teamwork should expect to benefit from improved efficiency, employee retention, and a noticeable shift in how their organization is viewed externally. Your customers and others outside your group Notice when your team isn't meshing and working together effectively. This is especially true when employee morale is low, but a poorly coordinated team will generally put out products and services that are inferior or inconsistent. Improved customer service and continuity with those outside of your immediate team are expected outcomes for any strong work group. When you start focusing on team building, your perspective shifts towards one of continuous improvement, creativity, and innovation. 
whether digging trenches, manufacturing a product, shipping packages, delivering a sales pitch, or providing medical services. Building a positive team culture is the secret ingredient to effective, safely completed, and consistent results. Sounds easy, right? Just change your mindset and hey, presto, you've got a strong team ready to take on the day. Not quite. It takes a lot to turn around a team and change an existing workplace culture. There are also many issues of which coworkers and team leaders may not even be aware. Building this awareness is the first step before tackling any big changes. That's, once again, where open communication and free-form judgment becomes crucial. When you begin to listen to your teammates, you may find that they feel their ideas and concerns have been sidelined in the past. It may even hurt to hear what they have to say. If you feel the same way as the popular opinion, you may also find you desire to jump on the bandwagon. Do your best to balance your input, to make sure that all voices are heard, if your team is made up of people with diverse experiences and backgrounds, their perspectives on what needs to change could be dramatically different person to person. They might also feel it's safer to just go along with the crowd. One tendency in our society is for certain views to be heard while some are silenced. Make clear that any changes that take place now will always be open for discussion in the future. Nothing is written in stone. The idea is not to just change a policy or an everyday practice to meet the needs of today. Communicate that you understand needs and situations change and that the team will be growing from here on. If you're not in a leadership role, you can still encourage this approach. The last thing your team needs is to set up a set of rigid rules that makes a team inflexible, especially if you plan to expand your team in the future. A trend in workplace culture is for working groups to identify as a family. Adopting this language may feel right, but it also encourages overwork and burnout, feelings of resentment and confusion when disciplinary actions are required, marginalization of dissenting opinions, overt favoritism, and development of cliques or inner circles, and might contribute to a workplace culture where those most vulnerable could be taken advantage of. It is a tricky business. Whether your team decides to adopt the family language is up to you, but it may be more prudent to simply settle on more neutral terminology, such as workplace friends or even just coworkers. Healthy workplace relationships should be more than sufficient for effective team building without needing to be elevated. We've already looked at many of the characteristics, benefits, and challenges associated with nurturing teamwork. We also discussed how effective listening and building a culture of positive and open communication are key team building strategies. Additional strategies include focusing on conflict resolution, cross training, and taking part in regular team building activities. Conflict resolution is an art. Anyone can learn to overpower a personality. That is absolutely not the goal. Don't think you've won if you simply end up being the last voice heard or your idea is what moves forward. Argumentation in the workplace should be seen for what it is, a way to discover areas for improvement and open up discourse. It is not another opportunity to marginalize ideas or show who's boss. The idea behind cross training is that other employees should be able to step in to assist or fill in a role or task when needed. This plays into succession planning and professional development. Added advantages include sharing the load to avoid burnout and helping to alleviate the guilt or taking time off. In that way, cross training actually ends up supporting work-life balance. Team building activities may seem hokey or awkward at first, but they are a great way to help employees learn about each other, learn to work together, and sometimes just infuse fun and play into the workplace. 
find an inclusive, entertaining, and worthwhile activity that you want to try out and get behind and see what develops. We have long since graduated from cell phones and emails as supplements to how we do work. The digital workplace is as much as a reality as brick and mortar companies. Hybrid and fully work from home options have become commonplace and the nine to five schedule is being replaced by a whole new set of flexible expectations. Even for teams that continue to work in person every day, online collaboration for project scheduling, organization, planning, record keeping, accounting, meetings, and many other traditionally face-to-face -face or on paper activities are the norm. There are many different options for online collaboration and organization. Before adopting any new software or system, get buy-in from your employees and research what is working for similar work groups. Considerations include cost, accessibility, and the level of engagement and interaction needed for your team to remain effective. Virtual team building activities can replace in-person ones, not by mimicking what would happen in person, but instead by leveraging the unique medium of online workspaces. The same is true for every shift you make away from in-person interactions. Emphasize the efficient and respectful use of time and building a culture of trust across teams. Set reasonable expectations, online appropriate policies and processes, and have frequent one-on-one -on -one meetings to build the employer-to-employee -employee relationship. The goal of moving to more digital processes should also be for improvement, not just replacement. A move to adoption of online collaboration tools offers a great chance to streamline processes and take a hard look at what is really needed for leaner and more nimble and responsive operations. Did you take notes on your ideas as you went through this training? How could what you learned today be applied to your own work? Take what you learned and begin an open dialogue with your coworkers. You can incorporate these into morning meetings, design half day or longer retreats around team building, and even use your ideas to identify other trainings you and your team would like to dive into next. A great next step is to explore our training topics, building positive workplace cultures, diverse equity and inclusion, one-on-one -on -one meetings, incorporating fun and play into the work environment, and other strategies that will help you develop and strengthen your team. Throughout this training, you learned about nurturing a positive workplace culture by focusing on building effective teams. We explored the characteristics of effective teams, benefits of building a culture of teamwork, the challenges you will face as you work to improve your team dynamic, strategies for nurturing teamwork, the unique nature of team building in our digital world, and opportunities to take these strategies further. Don't do it alone. After all, you are part of a team. Did you take notes? Did you discuss anything with your coworkers as we completed this training? How will you and your team take what you've learned and apply it? The next step depends on you.